Praise the Lord. I believe God. The uh, Lord told me one time concerning uh, ministering in the churches that uh, we were to teach people uh, to believe God, to believe His Word, faith in God and faith in His Word. Teach people to walk in love and walk in the Spirit. Amen. And teach people uh, about the, the unfailingness of God's Word. That's our assignment. And so we do that consistently. So you will hear a lot of teaching on faith. You'll hear a lot of teaching on walking in love and walking in the Spirit. And uh, tonight, we want to go to Acts 2. I want to look at this subject, a deeper flow. A deeper flow. And uh, we want to talk about some things concerning the Holy Spirit. And uh, I've told this story very often, but very uh, many years ago, uh, it would have been uh, probably 2001, I guess, uh, I was uh, invited to a meeting. Uh, a friend of mine, Dr. T.L. Lowry, was ministering at a church in, in Tampa, Florida. Uh, the pastor was a good friend of mine, and uh, uh, the associate minister was an even better friend. And uh, so I, I, the, the Lord had instructed me to be in that meeting, and so I flew down, and my friend picked me up at the airport, and we went to have something to eat. And, and uh, so we were going back over to the church, and Dr. Lowry was having a leadership meeting, and uh, they invited me to attend, and I was sitting there, and he ministered on this subject of the Holy Spirit and leadership. Now, you know, Dr. Lowry was the uh, uh, president of the Church of God for years. Uh, he was the international president of the Church of God for years. He was uh, a very prominent healing evangelist in the days of the Voice of Healing. He was very young, though, 19, 20 years of age uh, in the days of the Voice of Healing. Uh, had a tent and, and just saw miracles, signs, and wonders. But he made a statement. He made some statements in that meeting. He was talking about the Holy Spirit and leadership. And the thing that I kept thinking while I was sitting on that front row was this. He knows the Holy Spirit in a way that I don't know him. You know, every time I get around somebody that is uh, someone that I respect in the faith, I generally come away with this understanding that they know something about something more than I do. Does that make sense? Every, every time. And I sat there on that front row, and he made statements about the Holy Spirit that I'd never heard anybody make. And, and I was raised Pentecostal. Amen. I mean traditional Pentecostal. You know, the good kind. No, I'm joking. But, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Right? But the, the, the point is, he made statements about the Holy Spirit that I, I had never heard anybody make. And uh, I came away understanding I need to know the Holy Spirit in a deeper way. Amen. And so, when the Lord reveals those things to you, and you look, anybody that's had any level of significance or success, if we could put it that way, in the kingdom of God, the body of Christ, any minister, any pastor, any evangelist, Anyone that's had any level of success has had a very intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Every one of them. And, and I, I don't care what denomination they are. If, if they're Baptists, they have a level of relationship with the Holy Spirit that others don't have. Amen. You know, it's, it's no secret uh, or, or, or uh, uh, you know, it's no coincidence. You take people like Dr. Charles Stanley. Uh, that ministers the great First Baptist Church in Atlanta, in Atlanta, Georgia. The biggest thing about Dr. Stanley, I remember in the 70s, was how Baptist people were concerned he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Because he talked about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? I mean, James Robinson's ministry took on a whole new dimension when he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, this, this, the gentleman, he's in heaven now, Chuck Smith, that founded the... Uh, the, the great, you know, uh, 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 Calvary Chapel churches uh, in so Southern California during the Jesus Movement days, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Greg Laurie, who's seeing people saved by the thousands in these, in these uh, mass crusades, talks about, and, and, you know, they identify with the Baptist denomination, but they always talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
anybody in, in our circles, word of faith, anyone. They asked Brother Hagin one time, they said, how is it that you went from a regionally known figure to a nationally known figure to an internationally known figure in just a few years? He said, if there's any reason I know of, it's praying in the Holy Ghost and doing what I heard. Amen. So there's a deeper flow of the Holy Spirit. Now, Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. There's a deeper flow. Now, this, of course, is when the Holy Spirit came into the earth on the day of Pentecost. And uh, let's just start in verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. The primary expression of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is that the believer begins to speak. He said they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they begin to speak. So there are other manifestations of, of the Spirit, uh, dancing, running, laughing, but those aren't the primary expression. The primary expression is that the believer begins to speak. You're filled with the Holy, the Holy Spirit and you begin to speak. Hallelujah. Now, there's nothing wrong with running and dancing and shouting and laughing. No, nothing wrong with that. Uh, we, we do it all. But it's, it's, that's not the primary expression of the Holy Spirit. The primary expression is that the believer is filled and they begin to speak. Now, this is going to get even more important as we move on. In Ephesians 5. In Ephesians 5. Verse uh, 18, he says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, or evaporation, but be filled, the Greek is a, 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 a double expression here, but be being filled, it's consistent, it's constant, there's more than one filling I can be filled over and over and over and over again. All right? He says, but be being filled with the Spirit, and then notice, speaking to yourselves. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So be being filled with the Spirit and speak. All right? Be filled and speak. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual song. What we cannot ever allow in any of our churches is that we, we have access to this great power source and we just become a normal church. Amen. All right? Spirit-filled believers are supposed to consistently speak in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's a difference between the flow of the Spirit in the Old Covenant and the flow of the Spirit in the New Covenant. Uh, if we look at the book of Colossians, chapter 2, and verse 16, the Apostle Paul writes to the church at Coloss, and he says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ. The body is Christ. So the Old Covenant pictured things to come. The Old Covenant was a shadow. The Old Covenant was a type. All right. Now you can't have the new without the old, because the old sits on the shoulders of the new, or, or the new sits on the shoulders of the old but, old, but yet it was a shadow. It was a type. It was a figure of what is to come. And so, 
it pictured things to come in the new covenant. The flow in the old covenant was expressed outwardly. It was expressed outwardly. Uh, the, 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 the Spirit would come on men and women of God for acts of service. The Spirit would come on the priest. The Spirit would come on the prophet. The Spirit would come on the king. Three primary individuals that were anointed in the Old Covenant was the prophet, the priest, and the king. And the Holy Spirit would come on them for acts of service. But the Holy Spirit did not dwell in them. Now, while that may sound elementary, it's important. Because the power of God manifest in the Old Covenant was manifest through people that the Holy Spirit only came upon. That was a shadow of the power that was to come in the New Covenant. Hallelujah. It was expressed outwardly. If you'll remember when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, the, the power of God came on him so mightily, he began to dance. Amen. Now, now, he might have started in the, in the flesh and the Holy Spirit came on him, all right? Uh, like I said, we're not talking uh, bad about dancing in church. We need to dance in church. But here's the point. It was still an outward expression. It was an outward flow. Amen. All, all the great things that Samson did were outward expressions of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would come on him and he would do these great acts. Over and over again, we see that. The Holy Spirit, when Saul was in the midst of some of his greatest rebellion, it says he went and joined himself to some prophets, and the Holy Spirit came upon him, and he began to prophesy. And it said, therefore it's written, is not Saul also of the prophets. Amen. It, it, was, it was an outward flow. It was expressed outwardly. The flow in the new covenant is expressed inwardly. Now how is that? Through a flow of living water, by speaking in tongues, by speaking in, 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 in other tongues. It's a flow of living water. The things in the Old Covenant were a shadow of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Over and over again we see the shadows of Jesus in, in, under the Old Covenant. When Joseph was sold into slavery, he was in the land of promise and born in the land of promise and he was sold into Egyptian slavery and, and stayed in Egypt for a period of time and, and became the redeemer for God's people. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and after he was born, after a number of months, a, number, a couple of number of years, the Bible says that Herod sought his life and that the angel appeared to, to Joseph and said, take him into Egypt and stay there until they are dead that seek the young child's life. And he stayed there and our Redeemer came back out of Egypt and came back into the land of promise and redeemed you and I. Over and over again we see these shadows. Isaiah said that what would happen under the new covenant was that there would be a, a, a speaking in another language that was a spiritual language and that it would be a rest and a refreshing for those that, that spoke it. The Holy Spirit is rest and refreshing for us because it's, there, there is a flow. The Bible talks about seven things in the book of John that the Holy Spirit does. And each one of those things are a flow of power that I can access at any time by praying in the Holy Ghost. I can access that flow of wisdom. I can access that flow of knowledge. I can access that flow of when people will say, well, I don't know. I was talking to a lady one time. And she kept telling me over and over again, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I, I finally got a, a word in edgewise. I said, sister, and I've known these, these people for years, multiple years, decades. And I said, dear sister, I said, you have a divine genius on the inside of you. You just have to access him. Amen. See, the, 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 the issue is always when you face something that you don't know what to do, You've got to train yourself to pray in the Spirit. Because there's a flow of wisdom there. He is the Spirit of wisdom. He is the Spirit of understanding. He is the Spirit of knowledge. The, 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 the nine gifts of the Spirit that are listed in 1 Corinthians, the three revelation gifts, the, the, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, all of those can be accessed, that wisdom, that knowledge, that discernment. Of, of the spirit realm. It's not a gift of discernment. It's a discernment in the spirit realm. That can all be accessed by praying in the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. But I've got, to, I've got to train myself to do that. Glory to God. Because there's a flow in, the, in that arena. There's a flow that I, that I access and I begin to stir that up. Notice in John 4, this is something that Jesus said. Oh, thank you, Jesus. John 4 and 23, you'll remember that Jesus was dealing with the woman at the well. And he tells this dear woman, he says, The hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers, now this is so important, he's talking to us about true worship. And he says, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit. And them that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Must. So as believers, there has to be a deeper spiritual worship that's entered into by speaking out of my innermost being. All the worship in the Old, Te Old, Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, it was all outward. It, it was all what I do. It was all things that I bring. It was all outward focused. Under the New Covenant, my worship is inward focused. It's, it comes from out of me. It comes from out of my spirit. And Jesus said the hour was coming and was then at that moment with Him being there when the true worshipers would worship Him in spirit and in truth because there's a deeper flow. There, there's a certain spiritual victory that comes through shouting or jumping or dancing or running, but it's nothing like the victory that comes by speaking in other tongues. There's nothing like it. I can do that anywhere. You can confine me to any space, and you can't stop me from getting in the Spirit. Amen. John, John the, the, the Apostle John, was on the Isle of Patmos, out on a, on, a, on a rock of granite, out in the middle of the Aegean Sea, put there, banished there by, by the emperor of Rome for, for, for refusing to offer incense to, to Caesar. And he's put out there, and he's banished. And he's in a cave with his, with his assistant. And the Bible says that out there in the middle of the Aegean Sea, where he was put to die, that he got in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Amen. And, 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 and saw and heard and wrote one of the greatest revelations the world's ever seen. Be because being in the Spirit is not limited to where I'm at. Because the source is on the inside of me. It comes from out of my spirit. We sing that song when I was a boy in church. Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Spring up a well and give to me that life abundantly. Amen. Because I'm, it's springing up on the inside of me. Amen. We'd, we'd sing that song a lot. I got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. It opens prison doors, sets the captive free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a deeper flow. And so much of what we see, and, and, and please don't misunderstand what I'm saying today. So much of what we see in, 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 in worship in many churches today is a, is a going back to an outward exhibition instead of an inward flow. It cannot just be focused on the externals. Right? How I sound, how I look. We want to sound good. We want to look good. But what's coming out of us is more important than how we look. Glory to God. Do you see this? You, you, can't, you can't define spirituality by who's jumping or who's running or who's dancing or who's shouting. You define spirituality by what's coming out of that person. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Do you see that? So Jesus said that the true worshipers will worship Him in spirit and in truth. So this is a deeper spiritual 
worship. Why? Because I'm speaking out of my innermost being. John chapter 7. Hallelujah. And Jesus has made his way to the, the feast that they're holding in Jerusalem. And it's a time of celebration and they're dancing in the streets and the, 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 the priest would go and, 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 and uh, bring that container full of water and he's coming to pour it out as a drink offering unto the Lord. And Jesus is there and in the middle of this feast, he steps up. It says he stood and cried saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly or out of his innermost being will flow rivers, rivers of living water. Hallelujah. So everything that was going on in that feast was a type of what Jesus was going to produce with his death, burial, and resurrection when he sent the Holy Spirit back. What you're seeing here as a sacrifice, a drink offering being poured out, I'm telling you that I'm the drink offering, I'm the sacrifice, and with my sacrifice, if you believe on me, something's going to happen. You're going to have a flow on the inside of you that's going to produce rivers of living water. Amen. Rivers and a well. He said at one point, he said there would be a flow, that there would be a well springing up on the inside. That's salvation. When you got born again, you had the Holy Spirit come and reside in your spirit. It developed a well, the well of salvation that you can draw from. But when you got that, 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 that subsequent experience to salvation, which was the infilling of the blessed Holy Spirit, then you received access to rivers of living water, rivers that can, that can supply other people, rivers that can supply every area of your life. Amen? Amen? So the person filled with the Holy Spirit will have a supernatural flow from their innermost being. Our lives should be supernatural. Amen. And, and when we talk about supernatural, I, I don't mean, you know, a lot of people when they talk about the Holy Spirit, and they talk about supernatural, it, it's always scary, spooky. Ooh. Right? It's all, that's a, oh. No, it's supposed to be natural to us. It's supernatural to other people, but the supernatural is natural to us. I got to live in these flows. Got to live in these flows. You know, over the years, uh, I've, I've made it a point to do something. I listen, and I know this is going to sound, you know, cliche, but I listen to my elders. I listen to people. I've, I've been very fortunate to be around a lot of generals in the faith. And I made it a point to understand something, that when the generals are talking, the privates should listen. Amen. 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 And so I, I do a lot of listening. And I, and I go down the line and listen to, the, to these men. Uh, I, Pastor Caldwell, when, when the Lord was uh, telling him what to do, the Lord, he was praying in the Spirit, by the way, in Ed Dufresne's basement apartment in, in Southern California. And he said the anointing came on him, and he just began to weep uncontrollably. And the Lord said, I want you to go back to Little Rock, Arkansas, and I want you to start a church there. I want you to build me a spiritual production center, producing life, city, state, nation, and world. And he came back and started Agape. Well, they were outgrowing the building they were in, that, that, that storefront. They had bought a, a couple of those uh, uh, places over there, or rented them, leased them. And the Lord began to tell him where to go, and he went up there on the top of Napa Valley, you remember the story, and sat there on a stump and was praying in the Holy Ghost. See, I hear these things and I think, hmm, praying in the Holy Ghost. And while he's praying in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go and offer him this amount of money. And he went and offered it and they said, no, I'm not going to take that. We don't even want to sell it. It's owned by a group and we don't even want to sell it. So he went back up and sat on that stump and said, now what do I do? Prayed in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord said, wait a certain amount of weeks and go back and offer them $10,000 less. 
But now listen, here's what I heard. He didn't get that from his head. He got that praying in the Spirit. Right? And he went back and they said, okay. I don't know how that makes sense. You wouldn't take a bigger amount, but you take a less amount. The Holy Spirit knew they would take a less amount. Amen. Amen. I had a good friend of mine. He's in heaven now, uh, uh, pastored in Topeka, Kansas. And uh, uh, I remember uh, when they built their newest building, they, they'd built an older building on this property. But there was a, a piece of property there, prime location in Topeka. And he, they wanted to buy it. And, and the people didn't want to sell it. He would take a lawn chair down. There was a, a concrete slab on that property. He would take a lawn chair down, set it on that slab, and pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Spirit over that land. You know, it wasn't long they owned it. Amen. Built one big church, and then God expanded them. They built another big church to the glory of God. But here's what I'm hearing. The whole, every time I'm hearing this, they're praying in the Spirit. They were entering into a deeper flow. And, and sometimes these things become clichéic. What they were doing was stirring up answers. They were stirring up answers. It does no one any good to sit around and talk about what you don't know. I don't know. How am I going to do this? And I just can't see my way clear. There doesn't seem to be any open doors. And I, I just don't know. You've got to stop and pray in the Spirit. Because you're stirring up answers. There's a flow that begins to flow in your spirit. Amen. Willie George, when, uh, how many know who Willie George is? Amen. Willie George, when uh, the Lord uh, had them to move to Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, he was uh, uh, an instructor at Rama there for a while, teaching a class on children's ministry, and he was part of Sheridan uh, uh, Road Christian Assembly, which at that time was pastored by Billy Joe and Sharon Darty. And then it exploded, and they went and built Victory Christian Center. But the Lord began to deal with him to be a pastor. And he said, I had a liability. And here was my liability. I was gospel bill. Nobody thought I had anything to say to adults. Amen. My children cut their teeth on gospel bill. I still watch gospel bill. <coughs> Amen. But anyway, the point is, so he, this, this always struck me. He said, so I was over on the campus of Oral Roberts University, watch, Praying in the Holy Ghost about what do I need to do. And praying in the Holy Ghost, God gave him a plan. He said, go on the radio, rent radio, or, 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 or get some radio time five days a week on the radio, and just teach the Word. And people will start seeing you have something to say. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, he did. And he built a church. Church on the move runs about 20,000. I'd say he, people figured out he's got something to say. Amen. Amen. But notice, it was praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Brother Hagen got the, 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 the idea and the desire to move from where he was in Texas, to move his offices to Tulsa, Oklahoma, praying in the Holy Ghost. The Lord led him through prayer and the Holy Ghost, led him and his team to the land that they eventually built Rama Bible Training Center on. And many years before that, decades before that, the farmer that owned that land had heard from the Lord that that land was going to be used to preach the gospel around the world. He had no idea how that was going to happen. But there came somebody that would pray in the Holy Spirit and prayers that were prayed decades before that were still lingering in the Spirit, because that man would, because Brother Hagin prayed in the Spirit, they intersected. When you pray in the Spirit, you reach out and grab answers that are in the Spirit realm that you can't access any other way. It's, it's, it's a deeper flow. Amen. And so I, I've, I've learned this over the years. The people that I have the greatest confidence in the way they've done most of what they've done is by praying in the Holy Spirit. Listening to the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So 
what Brother Copeland's mother used to say, Manetta Copeland. Somebody would say, I don't know what to do, Sister Copeland. She'd say, hit it in tongues, honey. Hit it in tongues. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's what I told Pastor Michelle that day. Hit it in tongues, honey. Hit it in tongues. Glory to God. Amen. Because that, that is the, that, that's the sign of spirituality. I was talking today about how, you know, sometimes people think giving a word or, or sounding, you know, is a sign of spirituality. No, it's not. A sign of spirituality, the first sign of spirituality is being led by the Spirit. The second sign is walking in love. If you can be led by the Spirit and you can walk in love, you're spiritual. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can't ever get the focus off. My job as a spiritual person is to consistently commune with the Spirit. Am I helping you with this? 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Divine utterances. Prophecy is just divine utterances. And he says, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy, that you may have divine utterances. All right, this is not the gift of the prophet. This is not the office of the prophet. This is the simple gift of prophecy that does what? Speaks unto men edification, exhortation, and comfort. That this is what this is. And he says, desire these spiritual gifts, desire that they work in your life, but here's something that you should always want, this ability to have divine utterances. Amen. Remember, Jesus said that he was looking for people that would worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. I'm never without an answer if I can pray in the spirit. Ever. I was talking to Pastor Michelle today, and we were discussing something. And she said, well, have you come to a conclusion there? I said, no, I'm still praying in the Spirit about it. You, you can't be afraid to just consistently go back, and as we said earlier, hit it in tongues again. Amen. And every time you think, if you don't have the answer yet, every time it cop, pops up in your mind, don't, don't go down that road. Just start. Why? You don't have the answer here. You've got the answer here. And every time that you pray in the Spirit, you're digging a little deeper. You're mining a little deeper. You're going a little further down because the answer's a little further down than you've reached yet. But eventually, you'll pull it up. You'll pull it out of your spirit. Amen. Say, say it out loud. I have the answer in my spirit. See, and, 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 and eventually, you'll just mine it up. You'll just drag it up. You'll pull it up. I don't, I don't mean for that to sound... You know, bad, but you'll just, you'll just pull it up out of the inside of you, and, and you'll have the answer. And, and, it's, and it's there all along. Glory to God. Because praying in the Holy Spirit, I access the wisdom of God. Now, that's a powerful thing. Amen. Do, do you see this? That's, that's why John said something about truth. He said, you have an unction from the Holy One, and he said, you have no need that any man teach you. Now, that doesn't mean you don't need anyone to teach you or give you advice. It means where, where truth and error is concerned, you have the Holy Spirit that can teach you truth and expose error. Right? Amen. If you spend time praying in the Holy Spirit, you're a lot less likely to be deceived because the Spirit of truth is operating in you. Amen. Glory to God. I heard Brother Hagin say something one time, and it actually came out that B.B. Hankins had said it. He had got it from Brother Hankins. He said, most believers, most Pentecostal people wouldn't know the Holy Spirit if they saw him coming down the street with a red hat on. Now, I'm not saying that's you. I'm saying that that is the case with a lot of people. Amen. When you know the Holy Spirit and you pray in the Spirit consistently, you're always accessing answers. And you, you can't afford to always be out there saying, well, I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to this, and I don't know how to... No, you got to spend time praying in the Holy Spirit. Now look at verse 4. He says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. 
But he that speak, he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Utterance in a known tongue. He that speaketh in a, a known tongue edifieth the church. But notice, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then verse 14. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. So there's a flow of the Spirit to edify yourself, and there's a flow of the Spirit to edify the church. The flow of prophecy in a known tongue edifies the church. Now, tongues and interpretation are equivalent to prophecy. That's what, remember what Paul said? He said, he said, if there be one in the church and they give a tongue, he said, that's fine, let them speak, but let, let somebody interpret. There needs to be an interpretation. Do these things decently and in order. Speaking in, the, in tongues is the same as speaking in the Spirit. When you speak in tongues, you bypass your mind. That's so important. You bypass your mind. I'm not getting my information from, my mental, from the mental arena. I have a deeper flow that's going here. When you're trying to make a decision, yes, look at all the facts and look at all the, the, the things that are there available for you to look at, but then spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. You remember uh, the story that uh, Pastor told about uh, when, when they were in the accident and uh, Miss Jeannie had her back broken. You'll remember that, that he said he called all of, of, of his friends in, in the ministry. And he said it was so interesting. He said all of them prayed according to their calling and their anointing. You know, he said Brother Copeland, Brother Hagen prayed and said, All right, we agree with you according to Matthew 18, 19. She's healed and whole and well in Jesus' name. Jesus said we'd have what you said, what we said, Right? He said, R.W. Shambach, he called R.W. Shambach, and you know Shambach, he said, you know, he said, Lord, reach down that nail-pierced hand and give her one shot from heaven. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. But I, you know what I thought was interesting? He said when Dr. Oral Roberts called, immediately he started praying in the Spirit. Now, I'm, I'm not saying these other men were wrong. I'm saying that that's interesting to me, that the man who, who spoke and said, tell her to do this, and tell her to do that, and tell her to do the other, was praying in the Spirit. Yeah. That's not lost on me. Yeah. Amen. I'm not saying I heard something you didn't hear. I'm just saying that that wasn't lost on me. That immediately he started praying in the Spirit. And then he said, and tell her to get back in bed, and don't get in her head, but stay in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And staying in the Spirit, the Lord told her what to do. And you know, you know the story. She didn't tell anybody else. She went home, and on that day, she told pastor, she said, today's my, my jubilee day. And went to the doctor, and the doctor said, boy, they sure did a good job on that surgery. She said, I never had it. But she had done what? What the Spirit said. Isn't that great? I can do what the Spirit says, and I just do what I hear. You do what you hear. Isaiah said that you'll hear a voice behind you telling you this is the way, walk in it. I just got to do what I hear in my spirit. But I have, to, I have to spend time mining the answers. See, don't ever panic. Pray in the spirit. Yeah, but they said I've only got this long to make a decision. Pray in the spirit. Panic's all here. My spirit's at rest because my spirit knows the answer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bypass our minds and we're speaking to God. See, that's, that's what he said here. Notice, he said, he that speaks in an unknown tongue, my spirit is praying. He said, he speaks to God. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. He that prophesieth edifieth the church. Then verse 14, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful, speaking to God. And what am I speaking to God about? Strategies. Plans. 
desires. When, when I don't know what to do, I pray in the Spirit, and, I, and I'm speaking to Him about what I need to do. This is the flow to edify the individual believer. And you have to spend consistent time doing that. In your private prayer life, this is so important. When you sense a strong authority, and a strong authority comes on your tongues, there's an anointing from God for you to interpret your own tongues. You feel that strong anointing, that strong authority come on you. There's an anointing there. Hallelujah. Notice verse 13. It says of the same chapter, Let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Well, that's not just in the church. That's in my private time as well. Praying in the Spirit and interpreting what I'm praying. Why is that so important? That's where the answer is at. That's the deeper flow. That's the deeper flow. Notice in John 7. John chapter 7. Thank you, Jesus. We read this earlier, but Jesus said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So there's a river, there's a Holy Ghost flow for every area of your life. I've seen this so often over, over the years in ministry. And please don't misunderstand when I say this. It just it doesn't compute with me. I've never, I've never understood this concept of burnout. But you'll hear so many ministers, you'll see statistics. You know that 85% of ministers were happier before the ministry than in the ministry. And my thought is they're doing it wrong. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I didn't know it was going to be so tough. Well, what do you think you were signing up for? <laughs> right? <laughs> Amen. I mean, the Bible says your life's not your own, right? And, and, and I've had friends of mine, oh, man, I'm just on the verge of burnout. Come on, man, come on. We're working in the kingdom, right? Here's why. Here's why. This flow of the Holy Spirit lubricates my life. I don't burn out when I'm flowing in the Spirit. People say, well, I'd rather wear out than rust out. Well, you don't have to do either. <laughs> right? I mean, you don't have to do either. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he's saying what I have hooked you up to and asked you to do is easy. And the burden of it is light. Now, that doesn't mean there's not challenges, but it's light and easy. And there's a flow. There's a flow of the Holy Spirit for your marriage. There's a flow of the Holy Spirit for my finances. There's a flow of the Holy Spirit for my churches, for my ministry. Amen. And, and, and you'll, hear, you'll hear ministers talk about, you know, how they just uh, burn out and backslid and they didn't know the Holy Spirit. Because you don't backslide constantly communing with the Holy Spirit. I don't understand that concept. And so consequently, I have a hard time relating. But people that always talk about how hard it is and rough it is and the ministry is this. And the, the ministry is glorious. I've done more great things, went more great places, met more great people, seen more people saved and healed and filled with the Holy Spirit, had more opportunities to see great miracles and wonders and signs and wonderful things from God since I've been in the ministry than ever before. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Here we are entering our 21st year of full-time ministry, and I feel like we're just getting started. The Lord told me the greatest years of our ministry was from 50 and beyond. I don't know why I had to wait till 50, but He did. So my best days are yet ahead of me. Amen. And, and you know, if, if it ever starts to be a grind, I just pray in the Holy Spirit and remind the Lord of that. You said my best days were ahead of me. 
But that, that's what people enter into. When anything in your life as a believer becomes a grind, you're doing it in yourself. You're not doing it in the Spirit. When it starts being a grind, it's because you're doing it in your flesh. You're not doing it in the Spirit. Because the things that God asked me to do do not become a grind. Amen. Do you see this? So there's a river for every one of those areas. A river of living water. In every area. In 2 Timothy 1. He tells us how to, how to do this. 2 Timothy chapter 1. <laughs> he says... Verse 6, Wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hand. One translation says fan into flame. One Hispanic translation says fan into flame with your mouth. Stirring it up. The way you stir up this gift, you stir yourself up, is praying in the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues. Speaking to yourselves. That, that you, there, there needs to be a lot of speaking in tongues in your home. There needs to be a lot of singing in tongues in your home. There needs to be a lot of prophecy in your home. Your kids need to hear you singing in tongues, praying in tongues, prophesying. Why? That presence will, 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 will attract them. They'll, they'll, they'll see the presence of God in your home. Amen. It's important. Why? I'm stirring something up. And, and you can put that into practice. Every time. When you're driving down the road, you're praying in the Holy Spirit. When you're doing something at home, you're praying in the Holy Spirit. You're stirring up that gift. You're stirring up the gift of God on the inside of you. And instead of constantly looking at things and saying, I don't know what to do, you're accessing wisdom by praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I, I've told people over the years, and you've got to understand what I mean by this. I'm never in a position where I don't know what to do if I can pray in the Spirit. And I always can. Right? There was a lady one time that owned, she was a wealthy woman, owned many properties, and she had had a stroke, and she couldn't speak. But she could, she could comprehend and, and could answer questions by writing things down. And so her son who was taking care of her businesses, would come and ask her questions, and she would say yes or no, or, or whatever she wanted him to do, and uh, say, I mean, by, by writing it out. And at the end, he would say, all right, Mama, let's pray. Now, she can't talk. And he would start praying in the Spirit, and she'd start praying in tongues. She can't talk in English, but she can pray in tongues. Why? Tongues bypasses your mind. It's out of your spirit. That was her spirit speaking. Amen. Am I helping you tonight? The things in your life that you need to make decisions about, some of them are natural, but spiritual decisions can be made about those natural things. Amen. Well, I've got an opportunity for this job, and it's a better job, and it's a better paying job. Don't ever make a decision based on just because it's a better paying job. Amen. Amen. You got to pray in the Spirit about it. Yeah, but it's a better job. God wants me to prosper. He does. But you need to pray in the Spirit and find out if that's your job. And if that's your job, go get it. If it's not, don't mess with it. Now, everybody ought to be working. Right? Somewhere. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> I had a guy one time came to the church, and, and him and, and the woman, I don't, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't think they were married. And that, that was the biggest problem. But uh, they wanted the church to help them with some money. And uh, uh, so, you know, we were debating as to whether we should help them or not. And, uh, well, it came up that she was working and supporting him. So I was talking to him, and I looked at him, and I said, Well, I said, I'll help you if you'll let me do something first. He said, What's that? I said, I get to go to your house and break your plate. Because the Bible said a man don't work, he don't eat. 
Boy, he left. He took off. He went somewhere else. Amen. Now you say, Pastor, Pastor, why are you saying that? Because, you know, don't be goofy with it. The Holy Spirit's never going to tell you not to work. Never going to tell you not to work. Or not to do something to better yourself. But I'm saying, when you, when you have an opportunity to do something, you don't want to just be led by, this, by the natural. Well, the hours are better. It's closer to my house. It's more money. You need to pray in the Spirit about it. I've watched so many people get into mistakes because they just did something, right? The pressure. Don't let pressure get to you. You don't have anything to prove to anybody. I don't have to prove to one person that I'm spiritual or to one person that I have faith. That's between me and God. Amen. And people get under pressure. I've watched pastors get under pressure. Well, we got to do this because I said, well, what you said, Pastor, was that under the Holy Spirit, the unction of the Holy Spirit, or was that just you? Amen. Am I helping you? I got to stir that up on the inside of me. I say, I got to stir that up on the inside of me. Then in verse 7, notice what he says. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So what happens here? Rivers of living water bring power. Power. God's not given us the spirit of fear, but a power. Rivers of living water bring a flow of love. And rivers of living water produce a sound mind. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love, and of a sound mind. Well, that spirit of power, that spirit of love, and that spirit of sound mind is the Holy Spirit. And that's the spirit that's been given to us. And I can stir that up. That's the deeper flow that I enter into. Nothing in, in your life is just a natural decision. I mean, I know there are things that are just common sense that we just do every day, but the decisions I have to make in my life, none of them are just natural decisions. I need to pray in the Holy Spirit. I need to decide what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. Because I can create rivers for power. I can create it by stirring up the gift on the inside of me. By praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I can create rivers of love to flow in me. Well, Lord, I'm having trouble loving that person. Well, what do you do? I'm going to stir up the love for that person. I'm going to stir up the love. Amen. I've counseled many marriages over the years, and I've never counseled any marriages with people that would constantly be spiritual. Because the Holy Spirit will tell me what to do. When you're constantly stirring up the, the, the river on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. The Holy Spirit will tell you where you're lacking. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you where you're not being a good wife or being a good husband or being adequate in certain areas. You pray in the Spirit. I have counseled many fleshly people because they don't stir up that river of love on the inside of them. Glory to God. I can stir up and create rivers for wisdom to flow. Amen. I'm never without wisdom. Because I can hear from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Do you see this? And that's when I become not reliant on other people to help me hear from God. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not saying you should never listen to anybody else. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I need to be able to, one of the three things the Lord told me early on in my ministry was I had to be able to hear from God directly in my spirit. Directly in my spirit. Hallelujah. And consequently, I moved away very early on in my ministry from needing any outside confirmation to what God wants me to do. And that saved me so much over the years. I say that saved me so much over the years because I don't need an outside leading. I have a river of wisdom on the inside of me. And, 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 and that doesn't mean that I don't respect people and listen to them when they say they have something from the Lord for me. I, I'm, I, I believe anybody can hear from God and I hope you're hearing from God about me. 
But here's, here's the point, is I'm going to check inside about what needs to happen. Amen. Do you see that? The wisdom is on the inside. And I know it can be tempting. Lord, I'd just like to know. Lord, I'd just like to know I'm on the right path. Well, the Holy Spirit compass is on the inside of me. That's how I know if I'm on the right path. You remember this, the story? Let me, let me share this with you. Oh, it's early. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me share the story with you. You remember in, in the Old Testament, uh, the Lord sent the young prophet to the king to tell the king that he was messing up, and the king was in the, in the temple offering uh, incense to a false god, and the prophet came and began to rebuke him, and the king, uh, the, the, the Lord had told the prophet that this is going to be a sign that I'm speaking through you, the altar's going to split in two, and the ashes are going to pour out of it. And sure enough, it happened. And the king pointed his hand at the, the prophet and said, Seize him, and his hand withered up. And he cried out to the man of God, Please pray for me. And he prayed for him, and his hand was restored. And remember what the, the, the Lord had told the, the prophet? He said, Don't go anywhere. Don't eat with anybody. Don't drink with anybody. Go say what I told you to say and come home. Right? And the king said, come, come to my house and eat. And, and you know, you're a man of God. He said, no, because the Lord told me not to do this. And he didn't do it. Well, he's on his way home, and he's sitting beside the road. And, and an old prophet that was deceived came and said, you know, uh, I heard what happened. Come to my house. He said, no, I'm not going to do that because the Lord said. And what did he say? I'm a prophet too. Now, now, understand why I'm telling you this. He said, I'm a prophet too. I hear from God. Come with me. And he went. And he's sitting in the house. And the Spirit of God then really came on this old prophet. And he said, because you didn't do what I told you, a lion's going to meet you on the way home and you're not going to make it. Right? Now, I'm telling you this for a reason. You know the story. That happened. Well, well listen. Under the old covenant, that man should have just done what he heard God say. He couldn't check his spirit to see if that man was telling him the truth. Because God had to deal with both of them the same way. Right? Under the new covenant, I'm not limited to having to be told by an outside source what to do. The best thing that any pastor can do for his people is teach them to hear from God for themselves. My job is to hear from God for this body. It's, it's, it's not to ride herd over individual sheep. Are you following me? I've had people come up to me and say, you got a word for me? <laughs> Pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody asked Charles Capps that one time, you got a word for me? He said, yes, 66 of them. <laughs> but, but my point is, will God speak to your pastor about you? Yes, He will. But that's not how you're led. I've watched people over the years. Am I helping you with this? I've watched people over the years. They'll come to church, first six months they come to church. Man, the Lord will speak to them. Seems like they get a word every other service. And then when that starts kind of tapering off, they'll come and say, well, what's wrong? And I tell them, you're growing up. You don't need that kind of hand-holding anymore. The Lord will still speak to you. I've had, I've had people not too long ago, somebody spoke a word into my life. It, it was something just what I needed to hear. Amen. But you know what the context, the, the bulk of that word was? Was this, you're hearing from God in your spirit about what to do. Now just do what you're hearing. When Pastor Michelle and I were in Marietta, California, some years ago with Pastor Caldwell, and we were really on the verge of entering into the transition to, to move to uh, Little Rock and to do what God's asked us to do. And we were there in, uh, actually in Pastor Nancy's church, uh, helping him. 
and uh, he was praying for people, and he asked to pray for us. And uh, he, said some, he said some wonderful things over uh, Pastor Michelle. And then he said to me, he said, you've heard from God in your spirit, and you're hearing from God in your spirit. Just do what you're hearing. Well, I knew it was God that was speaking to me. That was just a confirmation that I, that, that, that I was on the right track. But here's, here's what I needed you to see. I didn't need to hear that. I already knew I was on the right track. But the Lord will bring something along to encourage you and edify you and build you up. But He ultimately expects you to be led by your own spirit. Amen. And, and I've, I've known pastors before that are hesitant to teach their people to be led by the Spirit. That's the worst thing you can do. Amen. That's the worst thing that can be done. Why? Because I don't have all the answers. Nobody does, except the divine genius that lives in you. He has all the answers. Glory to God. And how do I do this? How do I stir up these rivers, create these rivers? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I, I can do that at all times. The Bible says pray at all times. I can, I can pray in the Holy Spirit all the time. Amen. Every opportunity that you get, you're praying in the Holy Spirit. And that's why I always encourage people. You know, when you get in your car, you need to listen to the Word, and you need to listen to different things. But, you know, you need to spend time in your car praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, on your commute to work or wherever you're going, pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, I, I, I found that trip to Kansas, driving. That's a perfect six-hour opportunity to pray in the Holy Spirit. Boy, you can pray a lot out. Amen. And, I, and people say, oh, that must be rough. No, it's glorious. Just praying in the Spirit. Amen. Flying in the plane. I just put the headset on, pray in the Spirit. Amen. Because I'm stirring up rivers. Now, while that may sound elementary, that's where a lot of people miss it. That's where a lot of people miss it. They never enter into the deeper flow. You never want things that are so important to be lost on us just because there, there are things that you can know you're supposed to do and you're not doing them. Hallelujah. I've got, I've got to make this a priority. Why? Because as the days draw closer and closer, we've got to be more and more accurate about what we're doing. Amen. I, I, I determined a long time ago, and I told the Lord a long time ago, I'm not going to be one of these people that has to constantly redo things. Made a mistake, now i got to go fix that and do it again. No, we're going to be on point with everything that we do. Hallelujah. How, how is that going to happen? Praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. I believe God. Amen? I believe God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Entering into that deeper flow. Entering into that deeper flow. Entering into that deeper flow. Thank you, Father. Entering into that deeper flow. Oh, glory to God. Merevros namakaya. Ke te sinimoko urebreste ke. Oh, remene beste ke te ki ho no mo ko ho re gribista ka. Gre he si menene mo soye. Riste pe ke te po ko ho 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 rimana ma seke. Oh, remene de de besi ki de de bosna. Briste pe ke se ke te po ko na mahaya. Oh, re bre se ke te. That's the way to keep oppression at bay. Oh, raman de besi ke te po ko ho ramama mahaya. Oh, rebreste ke te rebrisne me ke ti ato poko ho riata pakaya. Oh, rama ma ma rebreste ke te pe ko 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 regrebese. Oh, na ma se pe ke ti se ki ti ko ko robroso ko ye. E se pe ke ne mosa ma 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 haya. Oh, rama ma ma rebreste ke. Oh, rebesi ki ti ne 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 mo ko ye te te ti a te pe ko na 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 mataya. E na ma se ke te. Oh, rebreste ke te rebrosna makaya. 
Oh, rama mama re re se ke te poko ho 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 ho. Ene me se ke te re re bros na makaya. Ere me si ke re re bros na makike. Ene me kiste e te poko ho re bros o kota varia sataya. Oh, rama mama re re se ke te re re bros na mahaya. Oh, re me se ke ti poko ho re kri te ke se ke. Oh, re me 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 re 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 be si ke. Ura brase ke te poko horum bre grevisia sokuye. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Koram ren grevre se ke te poko rovro se ke. Ura ma 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 ra brasa kata pa roho so ko revre se ke te fe kisa pa ya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise God. Ure me 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 re 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 be si ke re 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 bo samaya. E re be si ke hu 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 ra ma 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 ra bre se ke te re re bre se ke te re re bro samaya. E se me ki se ke te po ko hu hu hu. E ne me si ke re 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 bo samara ra ra basaya. Ure ma 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 ra bre sa ka ta ma ha ha. Oh, rebe se ke te re 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 be se ke te re re bro so ko to re re be re a sa ma ya. Oh, re me ne 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 bre se ke te re re bo sa ma ha ya. Bre se ne, engre bre se te ke te re re bro so ka ya. Hallelujah. 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 You know, if you're, if you're present tonight and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, very simple. Very simple to receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to do this the way the Lord told me. All you have to say is, Lord, fill me. Lord, fill me. I, I'm ready. Lord, fill me now. And then just begin to speak what flows up in your spirit. Oh, rama ma ma re bre ke te po so ko ma ha ya. E to ro vre se ke. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, re me 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 re be si ke te po ro ho se ma ha ya. E to so ko ro vro se pe te he ti ana ma ha ya. Hallelujah. 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 Mo re vre se ke te re re vre se ke te re re vre se te ne 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 me ke. Hallelujah. Now just slow down. I just hear the Lord saying that. Just slow down. Don't get in a hurry. Hallelujah. Because you don't have, you don't have to do anything. Just what He tells you. Oh Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 I believe God. Right there, right there, the answer's coming up in your spirit. Right there, it's coming up in your spirit. Just see it. It's right there. It's right there. You can see it. There it is. I'm telling you, there it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe God. I believe God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Merebo Samahaya. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, if you have something in your spirit right now, just speak it out. Just speak it out. Just speak it out. Merebrosnamai. Kira brosna me kiste he. Ura mama me reboko huye. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I believe God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's stand up, everybody. Praise the Lord. I believe we heard from the Lord tonight. The utterance is so good. So, And you know, when I say the utterance is so good, I'm not bragging on myself. I mean, it's, there's such a flow. There's such a flow. The utterance is so easy to flow. And uh, I say this all the time about our churches. Boy, y'all are easy to preach to. Easy to preach to. I go to, I've been to churches before, and it's like throwing a rubber ball off the, off the wall. It just bounces back and hits you in the face. Amen. I can tell y'all are taking it in, and what you don't eat, you, you put in a doggy bag and take home. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You know, I saw myself come over to you two and say this. Don't worry about it. Because if the foundation isn't set right, the house will be crooked. Amen. Just wait till you get to a place where you can set the foundation right. Don't get in a hurry, and don't worry. You don't have to do anything. Amen. You don't have to do anything. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. Please don't forget something that we announced this morning. Uh, the movie that's going to be coming out, Unplanned. Uh, about uh, this uh, dear woman that was the uh, director of the Planned Parenthood clinic there in College Station, Texas. Uh, it's a movie that's going to be coming out about her, her uh, experiences there. Now you can see Sister Gloria. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. So you can sign up out there for the tickets. The movie will be playing on the 28th, and they'll have the information out there for you as to where you can go and see that movie. Amen. I want to thank everybody again that prayed uh, with us yesterday and that has been praying in these 40 days of prayer. And also thank you again for giving into the food bank. Uh, we were told we got a text the other day from Sister Janessa that we were, and you heard her today, that uh, through our monetary donations, basically what it equals out to is 1,000 meals. And so we were able to bless people in that regard. And then the, uh, the, the physical foodstuffs that you, you gave. You all are a blessing. Amen. And we're going we're gonna to touch our city. Amen? Amen. I believe God. Well, come on, say it with me. The vision of this church is to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you.